Hey everyone, my name is Sapin Simon and this talk is about Treesitter Beyond Syntax Highlighting. For those who are not aware of what Treesitter is, let me give a quick intro. Treesitter, at its core, is a parser generator tool and an incremental parsing library. What it essentially means is that it gives you an always up-to-date ASD of your code. In my current Emacs frame, what you see to the right is the ASD tree produced by Treesitter of the code that is on the left. For example, if you go to this if statement, you can see it goes here. It is also really good at handling this. For example, if I were to delete this, it still parses out a tree as much as it can, but with an error node. Now let's see how we can query the tree to get the information that we need. Let's first try to get all the identifiers in the buffer. It highlights all the identifiers in the buffer. But let's say we want to get something a little more precise. Let's say we wanted to get this i here. This, in our case, would be this identifier inside this assignment expression, inside this for statement. We can write it out like this. I hope this gives you a basic idea of how Treesitter works and how you can query to get the information that you need. First of all, let's see how Treesitter can help us with syntax highlighting. This is the default syntax highlighting by Emacs for C code. Now let's see how Treesitter helps. This is the syntax highlighting in Emacs with Treesitter enabled. You'll see that we're able to target a lot more things and highlight them. That's it. You don't always have to highlight everything. I personally prefer a much simpler theme. Now let's see how Treesitter helps you simplify adding custom syntax highlighting to your code. This is a Python file which has a class and a few member functions. And Anyone who has used Python will know that the self keyword, while it is passed in as an argument, it has more meaning than that. Let's see if you can use Treesitter to highlight just the self keyword. If you look at the Treesitter tree, you can see that this is the first identifier in the list of parameters for a function definition. This is how you would query for the first identifier inside parameters, inside the function definition. Now, if you see here, it also matches CLS, but let's restrict it to match just self. Now, we have a tree sitter query that identifies the first argument to the function definition and is also called self. We can use this to apply custom highlighting onto this. This is pretty much all the code that you'll need to do this. The first block here is essentially to say in Treesitter to highlight anything with python.self with the face of custom-set. Now the second block here essentially is how we match for that. Now if you go back into a Python buffer and re-enable Python mode, we'll see that self is highlighted differently. How about creating text objects? Treesitter can help there too. For those who don't know, text objects is an idea that comes from Vim. And you can do things like select word or delete word, or things like that. There are other text objects like line, paragraph. And for each text object, you can have operations that are defined on them. For example, delete, copy, select, comment, all of these are operations that you can do. Let's try and use Tracitor to add more text objects. This is a plugin that I wrote which lets you add more text objects into Emacs. It helps you add code-aware text objects like functions, conditionals, loops, and such. Let's see an example scenario of how something like this could come in handy. For example, I can select inside this condition or inside this function and do things like that. Or let's say I want to take this conditional, move to the next function and create it there. But I would do something like delete the conditional move to the next function, create a conditional there, and paste. Let's try another example. 
let's say I want to take this and move it to the end. If I had to do it without text objects, I'd probably have to go back to the previous comma and delete till next comma, find the closing bracket and paste before. That works. But let's see how TreeSitter can simplify it. With TreeSitter, I can say delete the argument, go to the end of the next argument and then paste. TreeSitter essentially helps Emacs understand the code better semantically. Here is yet another use case. I work at a remote company and I often find myself being in the call with my teammates explaining the code to them. And one thing that really comes in handy is the narrow capability of Emacs, specifically the fancy narrow package. I use it to narrow to just the function or I could narrow to the condition. Next end in the list would be code folding. This is a package which uses TreeSitter to improve the code folding functionalities of Emacs. Code folding has always been this thing that I've had a love-hate relationship with. It usually works most of the time, but then fails if the indentation is wrong or we do something weird with the arguments. But now with TreeSitter in the mix, it's a lot more precise. I can fold comments, I can fold functions, I can fold conditionals, you get the idea. I work with Kubernetes, which means I end up having to write and read a lot of YAML files. And navigating big YAML files is a mess. The two main problems are figuring out where I am and two, navigating to where I want to be. Let's see how TreeSitter can help us with both of this. This is an example YAML file. To be precise, this is the values file of the Redis Helm chart. I'm somewhere in the file on tag under image, but I don't know what this tag is for. But with the help of TreeSitter, I've been able to add this information into my header line. If you see in the header line, you'll see that I'm under sentinel.image. Now let's see how this helps with navigation. Let's say I want to enable persistence on master node. So with the help of TreeSitter, I was able to enumerate every field that is available in this YAML file and I can pass that information onto iMenu, which I can then use to go to exactly where I want to. Also, since we're not dealing with any language specific constructs, this is very easy to extend to other similar languages or config files in this case. So for example, this is a JSON file and I can navigate to location or project. And just like in YAML, it shows me where I'm at. I'm in projects.name or I'm inside projects.highlights or how about Nix. This is my home.nix file. Again, I can search for services and this lists me all the services that I've enabled. How about just services.description. So this is all the services that I have enabled and have descriptions. Now that we have seen this for config files, let's see how similar things apply for code. Just like in config files, I can see which function I'm under. And if I go to the next function, it changes. Okay, here is something really awesome. This is probably one of my favorites. And one of the things that actually made me understand how powerful TreeSitter is and got me into it. I work with a lot of Go code. And anyone who has worked with Go will tell you how repetitive it is handling errors. For those who don't write Go, let me give you a rough idea of what I'm talking about. If you want to bubble up the error, the way you would do it is just to return the error to the function that called you. So over here, you can either return nil or an empty value. And at the end, you return error. Let's try and use TreeSitter to do this. Using the help of TreeSitter, let's make Emacs, go back, figure out what the return arguments are, figure out what their default values are, and automatically fill in the return statement. For me, it would look something like this. In my case, it filled in the complete form. It figured out what the return arguments are, what their types are, and what their default values are, and filled out the entire return. And since this is a template, I can go to the next function, do the same thing, next function, do the same thing, next function, do the same thing. It is a really fascinating use case of TreeSitter, structural editing. You might be aware of plugins like Paradit, which seems to know your code. This sort of takes it onto another level. It is in its early stages, but what this lets you do is completely treat your code as an ASD and edit as if it's a tree instead of characters. I am not going to go much in depth into it, but if you're interested, 
that is a talk from last year's Emax Conf around it. I'm just going to end this with one last tiny thing that I found in the TreeSitter Extras package. It's this tiny macro called TreeSitter Save Excursion. It works pretty much like Save Excursion, but better. It uses the TreeSitter syntax tree instead of just the code to figure out where to restore the position. My main use case for this was with code formatters. Since the code moves around a lot when it gets formatted, save excursion is completely useless. But this came in handy. I'll just leave you off with what the future of TreeSitter looks like for Emacs. So far, every TreeSitter related feature that I've talked about is powered by this library. But there is talks about TreeSitter coming into the core. It will most probably be landing in Emacs 29. And if you want to check out the work on TreeSitter in core Emacs, you can check out the features slash TreeSitter patch. You'll probably see more and more features and packages relying upon TreeSitter and even major modes being powered by TreeSitter. And that's a wrap from me. Thank you.